I could but unite in the vote of thanks for the truly patriotic address of the Jamaican Assembly. Their address was noble and inspiring, but in my opinion, it is absurd to rest quietly expecting a return of the halcyon days of old. I beg to offer the following resolutions. Resolved that a well-regulated militia in the natural strength as and the only security of a free government, that the establishment of such a militia is at this time peculiarly necessary for the protection and defense of this country, and that the known remissness of the government in calling us together in legislative capacity renders it too insecure in this time of danger and distress to rely that any provision will be made to secure our inestimable rights and liberties from these further violations with which they are threatened. Resolve, therefore, that the colony be immediately put into a state of defense, and that a committee be named by the Convention to prepare a plan for embodying, arming, and disciplining such a number of men as may be sufficient for that purpose. Mr. President, no man thinks more highly than I do of the patriotism as well as abilities of the very worthy gentlemen who have just addressed the House. But different men often see the same subject in different lights. And therefore, I hope that it will not be thought disrespectful to those gentlemen if, entertaining as I do, opinions of a character very opposite to theirs. I shall speak forth my sentiments freely and without reserve. This is no time for freedom or slavery, and in proportion to the magnitude of the subject ought to be the freedom of the debate. It is only in this way that we can hope to arrive at truth and fulfill the great obligations which we hold to God and our country. Should I keep back my opinions at such a time through fear of giving offense, I should consider myself as guilty of treason towards my country and of an act of disloyalty toward the majesty of heaven, which I revere above all earthly kings. Mr. President, it is natural to man to indulge in the illusions of hope. We are apt to shut our eyes against a painful truth and listen to the song of that siren till she transforms us into beasts. Is this the part of wise men engaged in a great and arduous struggle for liberty? Are we disposed to be of the nature of those who, having eyes, see not, and having ears, hear not the things that so nearly concern their temporal salvation? For my part, whatever anguish of spirit it may cost, I am willing to know the whole truth, to know the worst, and to provide for it. I have but one lamp by which my feet are guided, and that is the lamp of experience. I know of no way of judging of the future but by the past, and judging by the past, I wish to know what there has been in the conduct of the British ministry for the last 10 years to justify those hopes with which gentlemen have been pleased to solace themselves and the house. Is it that uh, insidious smile with which our petition has been lately received? Trust it not, sir. It will prove a snare to your feet. Suffer not yourselves to be betrayed by a kiss. Ask yourselves how this gracious reception of our petition 
comports with these warlike preparations which cover our waters and darken our lands? Are fleets and armies necessary to a work of love and reconciliation? Have we shown ourselves so unworthy to be reconciled that force must be called in to win back our love? Let us not deceive ourselves, sir. These are the implements of war and subjugation, the last arguments to which kings resort. I ask, gentlemen, sir, what means this martial array? if its purpose be not to force us to submission. Can gentlemen assign any other possible motives for it? Has Great Britain any enemy in this quarter of the world to call for all this accumulation of navies and armies? No, sir, she has none. They are meant for us. They can be meant for no other. They are sent over to bind and rivet upon us those chains which the British ministry has been so long forging. And what have we to oppose to them? Shall we try argument? Sir, we have been trying that for the last 10 years. Have we anything new to add to the subject? Nothing. We have held the subject up in every light of which it is capable, but it has been all in vain. Shall we resort to entreaty and humble supplication? What terms shall we find which have not been already exhausted? Sir, we have done everything that can be done to avert the storm which is now coming on. We have petitioned, we have remonstrated, we have supplicated, we have prostrated ourselves before the throne and have implored its interposition to arrest the tyrannical hands of the ministry and parliament. Our petitions have been slighted, our remonstrances have produced additional insult and violence. Our supplications have been disregarded, and we have been spurned with contempt from the foot of the throne. In vain, after these things, may we indulge the fond hope of peace and reconciliation. There is no longer any room for hope. If we wish to be free, if we mean to preserve inviolate those inestimable privileges for which we have been so long contending, if we mean not basely to abandon the noble struggle in which we have been so long engaged and which we have pledged ourselves never to abandon until the glorious object of our contest shall be obtained, we must fight. I repeat it, sir. We must fight. An appeal to arms and to the God of hosts is all that is left us. They tell us, sir, that we are uh, invincible, that we cannot be ready for this assignment. But when shall we be ready? Will it be the next week or the next month? Will it be when we are totally disarmed and when a British guard shall be stationed in every house? Shall we gather strength by irresolution and inaction? Shall we acquire the means of effectual resistance by lying supinely on our backs and hugging the deluse of phantom of hope until our enemies shall have bound us hand and foot? Sir, we are not weak if we make a proper use of the means which the God of nature hath placed in our power. Three millions of people armed in the holy cause of liberty and in such a country as that which we possess are invincible by any force which our enemy can send against us. Besides, sir, we shall not fight our battles alone. Oh no, there is a just God who presides over the destinies of nations and who will raise up friends to fight our battles for us. The battle, sir, is not to the strong alone. It is to the formidable, the brave. And we shall fight and conquer. Sir, it is useless to attempt to argue the matter. 
gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. The war is actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it the gentlemen wish? Hmm? What is it that they would have? Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God! I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death! 